John has a YouTube channel, Wisdom Love Spirit, and he's a teacher of um, the word. And um, we are very grateful to have him because we have. Um, I have a number of things that um, I wrestle with sometimes, and I would like to know more about. And I'm sure there's somebody out there who would also want to know more about these things. So we are thankful that Brother John has made himself available to be able to talk about these things with us. Thank you, Brother John. Amen. Praise God. And thank you uh, again, Eve, for the invitation. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. So we, we'll start with forgiveness. And um, we know um, we keep hearing that we have to forgive. But sometimes um, it is hard to forgive because maybe the one who offended us does not have any remorse or the person keeps doing, um, hurting us over and over. So how are we supposed to forgive, especially when the person who offended us has no remorse? How are we supposed to forgive? Mm -hmm. Eve, um, I think for forgiveness, there are two main benefits to forgiving someone mm -hmm. and two uh negative things, two dangers of not forgiving. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is for our own personal health, our own well-being, mm -hmm. because, you know, there's been a lot of uh, scientific studies and research done on people who are unforgiving, carrying bitterness mm -hmm. or carrying uh, anger and things like that mm -hmm. through life. Mm -hmm. And you know, it will cause you to be able, less able to focus, mm -hmm. you'll lose sleep, mm -hmm. and it can increase things like your cholesterol mm -hmm. and your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So obviously those, and other sicknesses too, that can, can develop from this. Mm -hmm. So scientifically, we know that it's not healthy for us. Mm -hmm. The second thing I would say also is for your own happiness. For the sake of your own happiness, it's in your own best interest to forgive. Mm -hmm. Because if we go through life carrying, you know, bitterness or anger or resentment or whatever it is, mm -hmm. waiting for someone else to, you know, maybe change or be punished or whatever we're waiting for, it's our happiness that we're sacrificing. It's our happiness that's being diminished. Mm -hmm. And... We don't know if they'll ever actually apologize or be remorseful. So we can end up waiting forever mm -hmm. and we're only hurting ourselves. Mm -hmm. So there's two reasons really, two pretty serious reasons that we want to be able to forgive people. And, you know, we know how difficult it is sometimes to forgive. There are mm -hmm. situations where people have yeah. really, really been hurt. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to make it sound like, oh, it's so easy, just mm -hmm. do this, mm -hmm. just do it because you know you sh it's for, for your own good. Mm -hmm. We understand that it's difficult, but it is for our own, own best uh, interests that we do that. And the Bible itself says, you know, if you want to be forgiven for, from God, then you should forgive others because we don't want to go to God and say, well, I didn't forgive anyone who hurt me because we've all done things to God. We've all done mm -hmm. things, you know, things that aren't right. Mm -hmm. And that's a sin against God. And it says in Matthew six fourteen, if you forgive others their sins, your heavenly father will forgive you. But if you don't forgive others, your father won't forgive you. So more encouragement to us to be forgiven. Okay, thank you. So another question I have in mind is, um, we know, uh, let's say, let's even take um, COVID-19. We have we see a lot of things happening in this world, a lot of pain, a lot of earthquake killing people. Um, the COVID-19 has killed a lot of people. We see a lot of bad things happening in this world. Um, and sometimes it's difficult for some people to say, okay, if there's a God, and he loves us and is a good God. Why does all these things keep happening? Is there really a God? Some um, people may think that, oh, the, these Christians are just delusional because like, if there's a God and he has all power, why does all these things keep happening? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I mean, that's a very legitimate question. And that's, that's a very common question. A lot of people have that question and it's totally understandable. So we completely understand why people would feel that way. And uh, the first thing I would want to say, though, is I think 
regardless of how strange it may seem the way the world is in that, probably the first thing we want to do is just be sure if, if there's a way we can know mm-hmm. whether or not there is a God mm-hmm. and know for sure, mm-hmm. then regardless of how the world may be, we want to keep in mind what we might be able to know. Mm-hmm. And I, mm-hmm. the first thing I would say then is I would suggest to people that they can know for sure if there's a God. And it's actually very simple. And it doesn't involve believing what anyone says or what any you know, organization or religion tells you. In the Bible, there's an example in 1 Kings chapter 18, uh, a story. I don't know if you know, Eve, the story of Elijah and the 400 prophets of Baal from Jezebel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's a a bit of a competition where they all want to kill him. And what happens is he says, okay, look, I'll pray to my God, and you pray to your God, and whichever God answers, that's the real God. Mm -hmm. And all the people who are gathered there agreed. Mm -hmm. And really, that is there, the essence of how you can know for sure if there's a God. I would challenge anyone. I honestly believe that if you pray, and you just say something like as simple as this, Jesus, I don't know if you're real, I don't know if you're there, but if you're God, if you really are God, then, you know, show me yourself, and I'll live for you. Show me that you're there. If someone prays that, and they really are sincere, if you really want to know the truth, I'm certain God will answer, because there are so many people who have prayed a prayer like that. You can see thousands of testimonies on YouTube and elsewhere, just, you can go Google it yourself. Anyone who's watching this, there's Hindus, atheists, mm-hmm. uh, Buddhists, Muslims, whatever. All kinds of people. So many testimonies of people who have prayed something just like that, and God always answers. And by the way, every time, it's always Jesus who answers. Amen. Only Jesus. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, that's an example of how you can know for sure that there is a God. And so then to your question, the next thing we want to do is if we know for sure, you know, if, if we can know that there's a God, why then is all this suffering and the mm-hmm. negative things mm-hmm. like you mentioned? Yeah, that's, it's, uh, as I said, a very common question. So now the first thing we have to understand, I think, there's a few things I do want to say. One thing I would say is this. The, the mindset that we have in this world, the way we live in this world, we always think of this world as being something very valuable and life in this world being valuable. And it's almost as though, you know, living in this world is what we want to do. We want to live a long life and live forever if possible. And we value the things of the world, where, whereas the teaching of the Bible isn't quite like that, actually. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, for example, Philippians 1.23 says, I desire to depart from this world, it means. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Mm -hmm. Far better than remaining alive is what he's talking about. Because he's talking about, you know, being alive or dying and going to go with God, Mm -hmm. going to be with God. So really, if we think of the fact that this is a temporary world, it's, it's really set up as a temporary world, And the ultimate eternal world is what's waiting for us. Mm -hmm. So when we die, we would be with God. That's a lot better. There's no suffering, no pain, and so on. So the first thing is our mindset. We look at death as being a bad thing and so on. And that's not really, if you think about it, it makes sense that death is a good thing. As Mm -hmm. fearful as we might be, it's a good thing to go and be with Jesus, with God. Um, So, as I mentioned, this world here is really, the purpose of this world is a test. So, now, if everything in this world was perfect and there was no pain, no suffering, no bad things, then there wouldn't be a test. That would be pretty much, you know, it would be like creating heaven straight from the beginning. And that's kind of what your question's driving at, I think, right? Mm -hmm. People want to know why not just create it like heaven right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. 
So now the thing is, though, it, because this world's created to test us, it's a very temporary world. All we have to do is, you know, God does give us, if we ask, and if we want his help, he will give us the strength mm -hmm. and benefits to be able to endure and to make it through different difficulties in this life. But it's only temporary. It's a really, in the grand scheme of things, it's a flash in the pan, and your life is gone in, in no time. If we endure and stay will actually get our reward, which is that place that everybody wants, that, it, that fantastic, beautiful paradise where there's no suffering and no pain. That's the reward, but that's in the next life. And, um, you know, one other thing I want to say uh, with regards to this, <coughs> excuse me, is if when God created the world, he actually even though it's only a temporary test type of world, he actually did create it perfectly. Mm -hmm. It was perfect with no death or destruction. Mm -hmm. But when he created us, he also gave us a really amazing gift, which is free will. And free will means that we have the choice to decide to do something right or wrong. Mm -hmm. It's our choice. And as human beings, we often make the wrong choice. Even when it doesn't make sense, we do things to hurt each other. And the only way God could stop that from happening is if we didn't have free will, if we didn't have the choice to do a good or evil, if we didn't have the choice for right or wrong. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Eve, imagine you were in a relationship, say, uh, say you're, you know, a young person in a relationship and your boyfriend mm -hmm. leaves you. Now, I want us to think of two different possibilities. Imagine you wouldn't be brokenhearted. Let's just talk about someone who's maybe going to be brokenhearted because their boyfriend left them. Mm -hmm. So if, you know, how could you have a world where you're not going to be brokenhearted? You're not going to be hurt. You're not going to suffer because your boyfriend left you. Either, as I mentioned, there has to be no free will so he won't leave you. Or the other possibility is you have to have no emotions. There's not really any other choices because, I mean, there are people, don't get me wrong, who are strong and maybe wouldn't be affected as much. But a lot of people, let's just, just say if we really cared about that person and they suddenly leave us, it's going to hurt. And there's not much you can do to avoid that unless you take out our emotions. And God didn't want to do that. So... He wanted us to have free will, and he wants us to experience emotions. And emotions, by the way, one other benefit of emotions is, you know, emotions are like desires. And, you, you know, even a good emotion like joy, the definition of joy is that we had some, we didn't have something we wanted, and then we received it, or we have something and had the possibility of losing it, not having it, but we were able to keep it, that type of thing. So even a positive emotion like joy requires the possibility of being disappointed, being heartbroken as a possibility. So, and if, if everything is guaranteed to be good, then you wouldn't even have joy because it would just be the same thing all the time. Everything would be good. You wouldn't know what joy was. You wouldn't know what it is to not have something or the possibility of not having it. So, and just a Bible verse with regards to this, you know, God said in Deuteronomy 30, 30, 19, I have set before you life and death, choose life. So again, that's free will right there that God created us as such. There has to be, you know, Eve, there has to be a consequence to disobeying God. Even, even us, you know, every society and every uh, uh, culture, every community in history has always taken people that were disobedient and either separated them or disciplined them in some way. Everyone does that. It's just it's for the greater good. So it's no surprise that in this world we have to have situations where people are going to be in pain and suffering. 
So um, in actual sense, you're trying to say that some of some of the mishaps that happen to us are due to our choices and due to our actions. Um, some. Yeah, I think that's true. Some, some. And well, certainly that's true. Yeah, of course, we bring a lot of pain upon ourselves. It's true. Uh, and, you know, I mentioned at the beginning, God created the world uh, perfect, no destruction, no uh, pain, no death even. We were created to live forever. But there's a scripture in Genesis, I think it's Genesis 2.17 says, in the day that you disobey, the day that you disobey me, God says, you will surely die. So it was our proclivity for sin that not only brought us death, but, you know, in Romans 5.12, it says, through one man sin entered the world. Notice, it doesn't just say through one man sin entered to mankind. It could have said that. I wonder if through one man sin enters the world means it's the entire world that is impacted by our behavior. When we disobey God, it has an impact on the world. And, you know, the Bible does talk about the entire world being corruptible and corrupted and decaying. And, and you know, so the point is, though, that originally there, when we were created to live forever, there would have been no landslides and natural disasters and so on and so on. As long as we had obeyed God, everything would have been fine. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to ask, this is just a, a bonus question. Uh, we know that when we um, pray, we are supposed to thank God, um, praise and worship him. Um, some people may be doing it and they don't really know why they do it. So can you tell us why we have to do that when we're praying to God? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, um, the, I mean, it is in the Bible. There's, uh, I'll give you a few verses quickly. Um, Psalms. 95 says, let us enter his presence mm -hmm. with thanksgiving. So we enter God's presence with thanksgiving. And again, similar in Psalms 100 verses 2 and 4 says, come into God's presence with rejoicing, i.e. singing praises, and enter into his gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise. The gates and the courts are you know, in a palace where you go to see the king, it's the first thing, it's the beginning of getting to see the king. So if you're going into God's presence, you want to start with praise and worship. And even in Jesus said in Luke 11 to when you pray, say, our father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. That just means holy or sacred be your name. So Jesus is actually teaching us when we pray, start with some praise and worship. Now, the reason God wants us to do that, so why does God command that? I think there's two things. First of all, praise and thanksgiving gets us in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And we need to, right, we need to pray in the spirit. Ephesians 6.18 says, always pray in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And we need to do that. You know, I'll, I'll give you an example from my own life. One time, uh, actually several times as this happened, where I'll go to Bible study. And before Bible study, you know, as I open the Bible, I'll just pray quickly to God to, you know, teach me or whatever. And so even though it's only a quick prayer, I try to say, you know, thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Just to get in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it helps me find, you know, where the Spirit is, what He might be doing, what He might be saying. He might be speaking to me. You know, the reason it says always pray in the Spirit is the Spirit will lead us. And He may lead us to pray different than we think. And so as I'm sitting there about the Bible study and I pray quickly, I see the Spirit's leading me and telling me, I don't want you to Bible study right now. I want you to pray about something. Mm -hmm. So that's just an example of how you know, just taking that moment to get in the spirit and start with praise and worship can actually be very important. It helps us to see where, what God is doing and lets him lead the prayer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The second thing I would say is uh, I think it's a good mindset for addressing God. Because, you know, Eve, for example, if you're talking to your Say you've, you you want to call your dad or something. Mm -hmm. 
when you call him, you don't just call up and start asking for something. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, Dad, can you, I, I need this or that, right? You're going to greet him first, right? Mm-hmm. Kind of talk to him, maybe greet him, whatever. On the other hand, if you go into a store and you're dealing with someone that, you know, maybe it's a stranger, you're traveling, you walk into a shop, walk into a shop, you'll go to the counter and you'll say, hi, I just, I need this or I want that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the difference is that we have a personal relationship with our father when we phone them or a family member, but we don't have a personal relationship with the person, the stranger on the street or in the store. So it's the same with God. We have a personal relationship with him. He's our father. He loves us. We love him. We don't just start prayer and say, okay, God, this person needs that. I need this and so on. There's a way to kind of greet God. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a lot to do with what God is doing. So, you know, praise and worship kind of gets us in the right mindset to deal with. Remember who we're talking to. And, you know, we got to remember, too, um, as soon as we, we, we give thanks, we're starting to remember all the things he's given us in the past mm-hmm. when we did ask for things. So um, more or less, we all know that um, a lot of times we hear that God is really after having a relationship with us. So it all centers around as having a relationship with us, uh, with him, because he just does, um, he is able to give us all the things that we may ask for. But he mm-hmm. he's uh, is very important to him that we have a relationship with him. That's why, like you were saying, um, we have to go to him like we have a relationship with him. Amen. Exactly. That's exactly it. Yeah. Kind of rude, you know. If you have, I don't know if you have kids, but if you have a daughter and they come to you and they, you know every time they come to you, they're just, "Mom, I want this. Mom, I want that." You know, especially say it was say you know you had an older daughter who lived away from home mm-hmm. and then. They call you, mm-hmm. and they don't say, hello, how are you, how mm-hmm. was your day, anything like that. It's just mm-hmm. like, hey, I need uh, I need money, send me money, you know, or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Kind of rude is, in a way, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Disrespectful. So it's, it's kind of disrespectful. So we want to respect God. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Um, thank you. You've blessed us a lot with um, these things. And uh, we um if there's anything on your heart you want to share with us um we would want to give you the opportunity to do that Mm -hmm. okay yeah i do appreciate that because i think i'd like to pray for everyone especially these topics we talked about right eve Mm -hmm. there's you know people dealing with some great pains in their life or people searching and not knowing if there's a god and things like that and these are serious issues so um uh, I'd appreciate to, if we can just have a quick word of prayer for everyone. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Mm-hmm. Praise God. Amen. Father, we thank you and praise you so much for the opportunity to discuss these matters and to Amen. hopefully present some some helpful solutions to people, Lord. Father, you know that there's people watching this video who are hurting or who are really struggling with forgiving someone. We ask you, O God, please give them the power and the strength to let go of whatever emotions they have and whatever emotions they're carrying, to let go of them, Lord, and to trust you that, you know, if there is something that has to happen to someone who's harmed them, that you'll do it, because the scripture says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord, I will repay. Help them, Lord, to put it into your hands. And it doesn't mean, Lord, that mentally they can't do something sensible, like separating themselves from someone who's abusing them a lot, and so on. We ask you to give them the wisdom to realize that's okay to do, as long as it's not in their heart that they're upset or angry at someone and doing it for the wrong reason. But give them wisdom, Lord, and give them strength to be able to do what they need to. And for those, Father, who are searching for answers, those who are searching to know if there's really a God and if you're the real God, we ask you, Lord, to reveal yourself to them. Help them, Lord, to go and make that commitment, to go off on their own and to just say, okay, Jesus, if you're really there, I will serve you. Just show yourself to me. Amen. Show yourself. 
And Lord, we pray that you will respond because the scriptures say that God responds to those who cry out to him. Amen. So, yes, Father, we praise you and bless you. Take care of them, Lord. Guide every person to find you and to find the truth. We pray in Jesus' holy name. We thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much, Brother John. Um, you've been a blessing to us. And we pray that whatever you lost um, during this time, God um, replenishes um, whatever you lost. And he lets your storehouse keep overflowing. And he keeps you and your family, blesses your ministry. And so that you can always continue to be a blessing to us. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Reed. God bless. God bless you too. Amen.